In the second set of notes for section 3.4, we are focusing on proofs. Make sure you read the given information and mark your diagram with tick marks to see what we're working with. So we're marking those congruent segments at this time. Let's look at what we want to prove. We want to prove that QS bisects angle PQR. What I'd be thinking about right away is we don't even see QS in the diagram. So let's go ahead and construct that segment. Keep in mind, like we talked about in the first part of the notes, we have to add that in our proof and say that we're drawing segment QS because two points determine a segment. Now let's think about what we want to prove. We want to prove that that ray bisects the large angle PQR at the top. So if that were to happen, what would happen as a result? So we're thinking backwards. Which two angles would be congruent if that ray bisected the angle? And the answer is the two smaller angles at the top would have to be congruent. Angle PQS would have to be congruent to angle RQS. So if we could get those two angles congruent, we can say that that ray bisects the angle. Let's write in our other two givens, which gives us already two pairs of congruent sides within the triangles. So we want to prove these triangles congruent. And since these two triangles share side QS, we can use the reflexive property on that side and say that QS is congruent to itself by the reflexive property, which gives us our third pair of congruent sides. Now, when we're writing that the two triangles are congruent, make sure that you're writing it in the same order. So if you label the first triangle PQS, you have to say it's congruent to the triangle RQS. And that's because of side, side, side. We mentioned our first pair of congruent sides in step two, our second pair of congruent sides in step three, and our third pair of congruent sides in step four. Now, after we prove two triangles congruent, we want to list the corresponding either sides or angles that are congruent using CPCTC. Well, the two angles that we want to get congruent are those angles at the top that we talked about in the beginning. So now that the two triangles are congruent, we can say that those two angles, PQS and RQS, are congruent by CPCTC which will then allow us to say if those two smaller angles at the top of the triangle are congruent, that that ray QS must have bisected angle PQR. The reason is if a ray divides an angle into two congruent angles, then it bisects the angle. Moving on to example two. We're given some information. Let's read over it and mark our diagram accordingly. I'm going to put tick marks on the two congruent angles that they gave us, angles ABD and CBD. And we're told that BD is an altitude, but let's first look at what we want to prove and see how we'll get there. So we want to prove that BD is a median. Think back to the first part of the notes. If BD were a median, we have to work backwards. So if BD were a median, what would happen as a result? And if BD were a median, that means that the two smaller segments, AD and DC, at the bottom of the triangle must be congruent if BD were a median. So if we can get those two segments congruent, we can say that BD is a median. So that's our goal. So let's first write down our first given about BD being an altitude. And let's see what we get as a result. Remember, think back from the first part of the notes, altitude forms right angles with the side to which it's drawn. So we get two right angles as a result, angle BDA and angle BDC. And the reason is one of our new reasons, which states that if a segment is an altitude, then it forms right angles with the side to which it is drawn. But remember, we want to prove those two triangles congruent which means we have to say that those right angles are congruent. So we want to say angle BDA is congruent to angle BDC because if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. That will give us a pair of congruent angles within the triangles. Then we should notice that the two triangles share that side, BD. So we can use reflexive property on BD and say that BD, that segment, is congruent to itself. So segment BD is congruent to segment BD because of the reflexive property. That will give us a pair of congruent sides within the triangles. And since we were already given those congruent angles in the given information, we can say that the two triangles are congruent by angle side angle. Make sure that you label your triangles in the same order. So if you label your first triangle ABD, you want to label the corresponding 
vertices in the next triangle. So we have to go triangle CBD. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD because of angle side angle. We mentioned our first pair of congruent angles in step three. We mentioned our pair of congruent sides in step four and our second pair of congruent angles in step five. Now, remember, after we prove triangles congruent, we want to use CPCTC. But we want to prove that BD is a median. So we're going to use CPCTC on those two segments that we would want to be congruent. So we can say now, since the triangles are congruent, segments AD and DC must be congruent by CPCTC. And if that's the case, then that means that BD must be a median. So we can say that since those two segments are congruent, that BD is a median. And this is another one of our new reasons, which states that if a segment is drawn from a vertex of a triangle and divides the opposite side into two congruent segments, then it is a median. What I'd like you to do with examples three and four, I'd like you to try these on your own, work them out, and then once you're done, hit play again, and then you can compare your answers with mine. With example three, we have this circle. So right away I'd be thinking back to what Miss C said in her video about congruent radii. So right away we can say that those segments AB and CB are congruent because all radii in a circle are congruent. And then that would give us a pair of congruent sides within the triangles. The one thing is we didn't even have two triangles to begin with. And we want to prove that angle A is congruent to angle C. So we want to create two triangles first. So we have to draw in that segment BD. Remember, you list that in your proof and say that two points determine a segment. You could then use reflexive property on that segment because the two triangles share that side. And then our other given information gives us a pair of congruent sides. So the two triangles are congruent by side, side, side. And then you could say the angles are congruent by CPCTC. We don't even have to go beyond CPCTC for example three. Now, for example four, I'm hoping you got to the point where you proved the two triangles congruent by side, side, side. But then let's talk about how we could get to those angles outside of the triangle. Two angles that are inside of the triangle that are next to the angles outside are angles BAD and BCD. Those two base angles of the triangle we can say are congruent by CPCTC. But then we have to work out. We have to get to those outer angles. So you should be thinking about supplementary angles at this point. So we want to say that that line at the bottom, ADC, is a straight angle. Or it's a straight angle, we should say. And it's assumed from the diagram. And then from there, we can mention our pairs of supplementary angles. So we can say that angle BAD is supplementary to angle 1 and BCD is supplementary to angle 2 because they form straight angles. But since angles BAD and BCD are congruent by CPCTC, that means that angles 1 and 2 must be congruent because, we have to think back to one of our old reasons, because if two angles are supplementary to congruent angles, then they are congruent. Please make sure that you've included all of these steps in your proof. It does not have to be in the exact same order as mine, but it would be looking for all of those steps.